We're here today with the general manager of Park Regis Kriskin Hotel, Mr. Colin Baker. Colin Baker, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Bella. <laughs> okay, can you please share to us your um, bio uh, as a general manager? Okay, um, I've been in the industry obviously quite a, a number of years, um, but working my way up basically from this, the bottom. So working in restaurants, bars, the front office, back office. So I've worked in all aspects of the hospitality field and uh, have not really undertaken any uh, management courses. So my background is really has been an experience based mm -hmm. uh, experience. And so I've obviously then used those experiences to further my career. And um, as I said, I've been in the industry over 40 years. 40 years? Yes. And how long have you been here to, in Dubai? I, I've been in Dubai about three and a half years. Uh, before that, I was in Papua New Guinea for a short period of time. I also worked in China for four years. Um, I also <coughs> used to work for Staywell, the company that owns the Park Regis brand. I worked for them in their corporate office as well, doing both uh, technical services, but also a general manager role. So I've worked in various aspects of hospitality, not just the general manager. I've worked in operations from a regional point of view as well. And one of my other titles here in Dubai is for um, the regional director for the Middle East, for Staywell as we try and um, branch out across the uh, GCC. So for the past three years and a half, uh, you work here here already in Park Regis? Yes, I, I came here uh, in September 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, the brief was really to ob obviously operate the hotel. There were a lot of new hotels being built in Dubai. So um, the, the supply was building, uh, demand wasn't increasing all that much. So we had to reposition the hotel. We also um, really had a focus on reaching out our brands to more parts of the GCC. So we've uh, since then obviously moved into um, Saudi Arabia, which we have three hotels signed in Saudi Arabia, all Park Ridges. We have a hotel uh, since I started, we've opened in Bahrain, and we have two here in, um, in Dubai, again, that have opened since I've been here. So I've had a very busy uh, initiation into Dubai. <laughs> okay, how does your day start as a general manager? Okay, the first thing obviously is really starting is to look at the, the forward bookings. At the moment it's very volatile, obviously with COVID, and so particularly the last 12 months, the focus has really changed to mm -hmm. looking at the forward occupancy. Uh, costs are a, a big factor because obviously the, the demand can go up and down quite a lot. So then really looking at the cost, but the start of the day is really focusing on what we've got forward bookings, uh, setting our rates for the forward you know, uh, month, two months, three months, to make sure that we're competitive in the marketplace to maximize the, the number of bookings that we can get. And then as the day moves on, working in operations, uh, development obviously, uh, with the new hotels that are yet to open, so they need a lot of planning. Um, and then on to, as I said, looking at the cost side of things. So it's a pretty full day. So you've been here now for three and a half years. How do you like it here in Dubai? Look, Dubai is a very easy place to come and live. Mm -hmm. As I said, I lived in Papua New Guinea, which is a very third world country. And uh, so with it comes uh, certain restrictions on how you live. Uh, Dubai really doesn't have those restrictions. Dubai is almost a 24 hour place to live. You have all the facilities available to you. Uh, flights are easy to get to Europe. Uh, anywhere you want to go, flights are easily available. I worked in China where we had a lot of, um, I had a lot of language difficulties, obviously not speaking Mandarin, but so that um, creates its challenges. Whereas Dubai, as I said, it's a very easy place to assimilate into and uh, quite an easy, easy place to fit into. Okay. Overall, do you think Dubai's hospitality is finally on the rebound? Uh, yes, it's definitely on the rebound. Uh, there was a report out last week from STR that mentioned that uh, outside of China, uh, the Middle East, uh, in Dubai in particular, has one of the strongest occupancies throughout the pandemic, and, and that's uh, continuing. So we see on the back of the government initiatives by not really locking the country down, which some countries have, like my homeland of Australia, is fully locked down. It's really impacted on the hospitality industry and people being able to move about with borders closed. The Dubai government's had a very liberal view to that 
and that's assisted uh, by be people being able to come here, feeling it's a safe environment, which it is, and also the COVID restrictions and the regulations and the level of hygiene that they have in Dubai is very, very high. So people feel very safe coming here. So that's all contributing. And then obviously not far down the track, we have uh, Expo to look forward to. So that's going to create another demand generator for the business to come into Dubai. Can you please share to us your property's occupancy rate here in Park Regis? Look, it, it changes from day to day. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, we've had a very strong, we thought when we were doing budgets back in last July, August, we thought it would be, you know, probably at least 12 months before we saw any real rebound. We noticed from September, October that our occupancies increased dramatically. So we were up in the 70s in um, November, December, January and February. And um, yeah, so it's been very strong rebound. Um, the forward bookings, the, the thing is, I guess that the, the change has come is because of flights from people and borders being closed in all parts of the world and all different countries having different regulations. The booking window, what we call the booking window, is means that people are booking a lot shorter. So they're only booking two, three, four days out, a week out, whereas previously they might book a month out for their annual holiday. And now the booking window is much, much shorter. So that makes it a lot more volatile and um, makes ensures that we have to really plan, as I said, particularly with um, manning and, and costs. What are your plans ahead for the property? Okay, for the property, you know, we're, we're, we just really want to establish it back to pre-2019 levels or back to 2019 levels. Some of the industry experts are saying it's going to be 2023. Some are saying it's going to be 2024 before we get the rates, mainly predominantly the rates, the occupancies are coming back. But it's getting that occupancy, uh, sort of the average rate up, that's a real challenge. So the main focus for us is really getting the occupancy up to a mm -hmm. high enough level and then we can drive the average rate. It's very hard to drive occupancy and rate at the same time. You have to get the occupancy up high and then you can follow it with the average rate. But in saying that, we still have a lot of hotels to come online in, uh, in Dubai in particular. So um, that will, uh, as I said, fuel the, um, the supply and uh, make, the, make it a lot more supply in the market. But hopefully the influx of people will offset that. So we look forward to, uh, said, stabilizing our occupancies, the number one. We've really we've been positioned in this market for, we've been open 10 years now, so everybody knows about Park Regis, Chris Kin, we're well established. So now it's, and also diversifying, diversifying markets, I think is another thing that we really want to do. So obviously we're looking more into uh, Africa, some of the African nations are starting to travel more to Dubai now. Um, you know, obviously the, um, the GCC is a, uh, a common market to come here, but again, they've had borders locked. Saudi Arabia, things like the CIS market is another one that likes Dubai. They like the sunshine, they like the hot weather, they like the, um, all the facilities available in, um, in Dubai and, and not having lockdowns. So a lot of the CIS market, I think, will, will rebound very quickly as well. Okay. Do you have any promos like staycation or, or the, the area of FNB? Yeah, look, we're constantly working with um, different packages with our marketing team. We have st obviously staycations at the moment because obviously a big market is for the uh, UAE people who can't travel overseas, mm -hmm. are happy to stay at home and experience different hotels. Some people I hear are going every weekend to a, a hotel just to stay. So that's created a new demand for uh, for Dubai, which is and uh, even the whole of UAE actually. So that's a, a strong market for us. So we're making sure that our offers are competitive. Uh, food and beverage, very, very competitive in Dubai. There's so many restaurants. Again, we're constantly looking at offers with um, Iftar. We have a very good, strong Iftar promotion at the moment, uh, which we couldn't run last year because of COVID. Um, that's now back in place this year, so we're happy to have it back. But it's um, getting the confidence in people to come out of their homes and start going back out into restaurants. There's still a little bit of reluctance there from some of the people. Um, our grandstand, our sports bar is very popular with particularly people that uh, local people that live around this area. So uh, again, we put out regular offers. So it can be as much as twice a week we're putting out different offers to try and entice people to come uh, here as opposed to all the other sports bars that may be around us. So it's, uh, it's a constant uh, weekly, daily battle to uh, try and bring up and uh, motivate the market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you please invite everyone to uh, visit or eat in Park Regis Skin Hotel? Yeah, look, uh, I would uh, love people to come here. 
as I said, we've been well established. Um, we have a number of restaurants and bars. We have the Chris with the View restaurant, uh, which has the most fantastic views of Dubai you'll ever see. Um, because there's no real tall buildings between us and the frame and um, the, the CBD of, of Dubai. Uh, we also have views out to the port, views out to the airport, uh, down to Al Sif. Um, the food there is very much international, so you're not restricted to one cuisine. We have, do have an Indian restaurant uh, downstairs. Our chef from Mumbai has done an excellent job with the food. Um, and because of the variances in food in India, we actually serve uh, cuisines from both north, south, east and west so that we, have, um, we can appeal to any of the Indians that may be living here so they can get uh, as, as close to their home foods as possible by doing the various regional dishes. Uh, we have where we're sitting now is the Chris, with a view, uh, Chris Lounge, sorry, which is more like a wine bar, um, nice relaxed place but again with a view on the 19th floor of the building has a great view. Um, so we have a, a multi multitude of outlets that people can come and, um, and not just have to go to one, they can go to the bar, sports bar beforehand, they can go up to uh, Chris with a, with a view for dinner or iftar, and then they can come into the wine lounge and just relax after the dinner. So it's, it's not a one-stop shop. We have uh, different things that, and different outlets that all cater to uh, many different people. So we look forward to all of you coming here um, as I said, we're constantly on Facebook, Instagram with all of our offers to the local market. So uh, keep an eye out for us and uh, hopefully you can avail of one of our great uh, offers that are on, uh, on offer at any one particular time throughout the year. Thank you so much, Mr. Colin Baker, for having us, especially to our production team. Thank you very much, Bella. It's been a great having you all here and thank you for coming and visiting uh, with us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.